So with that setup, that takes us into test automation. And let's talk about what that is. So that brings us to test automation. And, you know, again, I'll briefly sort of set uh, some context for us in terms of what is test automation. I think everybody you know, has a pretty common understanding. It, it's writing software to test other software. Um, and whether that's using Appium or Selenium or Cypress or uh, Catalan, you know, it, it's about uh, driving an application. Maybe it's a web application, a Windows application. Maybe you're just driving uh, APIs in your application. It's also, you know, not just that front end, end to end automation, but it's also all your unit tests, all your integration tests uh, using, you know, various frameworks, usually open source, things like JUnit, uh, et cetera. But that, that's what we're talking about. You know, in terms of what we automate, I think everybody's familiar with uh, the testing pyramid, in particular the test automation pyramid, uh, the fact that you know, we strive to you know, have a broad base of unit tests that are you know, relatively independent, not coupled to a lot of infrastructure, can run quickly. And then we layer on top of that uh, service tests, integration tests. Finally, at the top, we've got uh, UI tests, things that test the application as the user experiences it. Um, and that's you know, where Catalan has spent most of its time. Um, and that's uh, a lot of what you see uh, in our studio product, but we also test uh, APIs and we can integrate in with other unit testing frameworks. One thing that I think is worth talking about, and it harks back to Jez's observation about having a broad suite of tests executing uh, continuously and you know, quickly is what we see teams automating. And again, some of these numbers are coming from our white paper. And what I've shown here is sort of a progression from some newer, uh, let's say less mature teams to more mature teams in terms of where they're focusing their test creation. Early on, not surprisingly, it's the things that are relatively easier to test, unit tests, integration tests. Not as much uh, time automating functional tests because they may not have the tools in, they're setting their foundations, um, and not much non-functional testing. I, again, there's things they need to cover before that. As we move into sort of an intermediate uh, skilled, mature team, uh, we start to see less focus on unit tests, more focus on integration tests, more focus on functional tests, tests that go uh, from the front end to the back end, things that replicate the user experience. And we start seeing a little more non-functional tests. In uh, some of our advanced respondents, what we see is really a more balanced uh, set of tests and certainly more focus on non-functional tests, which I, I think is really interesting. I won't delve into it here, but um, I think that, you know, that expansion into performance security, you know, maybe even accessibility testing um, really only makes a bigger case for orchestration, even though I'm not gonna uh, do all that uh, here. So automation seems great. That is what we've done throughout our uh, DevOps CICD pipeline. Uh, we've automated uh, builds and deployments that's been our history. Automated testing seems great. Why do we need to do anything else? Why do we need to orchestrate our tests? And again, I'm gonna come back to this thread that I uh, stumbled upon that Jez Humble started and this response to it, which I think is, could have been set up better for me. Uh, this uh, person, John P says, uh, one year on, we have a pretty decent deployment pipeline but now we have so many tests that it takes over 40 minutes, takes 40 minutes to merge a PR. And I don't think this is uncommon. Um, I know plenty of places I've been have, have either you know, run into this, ultimately gotten past it, but you know, it's a real problem. You want to build more automated tests uh, to cover more functions more completely. But as you're adding to that, that's software too, and it's got to run. Uh, you've got to find servers for it to run on. 
it's going to take time. Now you want that to run every time that you have new, you know, underlying software. But now you, you you're creating a new bottleneck, and that's what orchestration is to get get us past, and that's what we're going to talk about next.